So Ricky Stenhouse, NASCAR driver, Xfinity champion. If you could describe this dinner with racers in one word, what would it be? Free. <laughs> Stole it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larson. <laughs> Just as free. Just as free. <laughs> three I mean, words. Tag along. Like four words. Three words. <laughs> tag along. Yeah. yeah. And then Ryan Blaney <laughs> with the same squad. Uh, I'm a guest. So I'm guest. It's a guest. 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 Yeah. Guest like is it. your word. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now for Dinner with Racers, presented by Continental Tire. With your hosts, Ryan Eversley and Sean Heckman. Placeholder Radio. <laughs> Welcome to Dinner with Racers. I'm Ryan Eversley alongside my partner, Sean Heckman, who has a new app he likes on his phone. And uh, <laughs> listening, we're currently driving to LAX. Uh, it's day 40 of our season two trip. It'll probably be the last time we do it this way because holy crap, is this a lot of work. 40 days in a car, uh, driving 12,000 miles across 29 states. The is only really reason, tough. yeah, the only reason we're sane is because this Honda Odyssey is so equipped because it literally has been able to handle all the crap we've put it through. We've driven through every type of weather you can think of, multiple terrains. The Continental tires held out awesome. We had plenty of storage so that we could fill the car up with all the recording equipment and video stuff, and two flat Bill Rileys and had no issues the whole time, so that was really cool. This trip, we ended up going to Las Vegas for the SEMA show, which I was doing social media for Continental Tire, so check out their Twitter account if you want to see what that was about. And one of the guests that we had talked about getting for a little while was Ricky Stenhouse. Ricky was going to be at SEMA, so it worked out with his schedule that he could meet us for lunch one day. So for those who don't know Ricky's background, uh, started out as your classic kind of dirt track oval short track specialist uh, actually raced very closely with Brian Clawson who we had on last season right. and they were very very close friends they even lived together for a little while so uh, Ricky was eventually signed uh, fairly young to a Roush development deal uh, uh, and has since been part of Roush Industries uh, uh, for basically his whole career drove with them in ARCA uh, then went into the what's now the Xfinity series won two championships and is now an active uh, Roush driver in the NASCAR Sprint Cup Series and uh, doing very well. So uh, getting him was, was definitely cool. So here's the thing about Ricky. We didn't know him. And uh, so we set up a restaurant near SEMA for him to meet up with us. And I get a text from him right as, uh, on time. Yeah. And he's like, hey, I'm outside. Uh, where do I go? So I go out to grab him. I walk outside <laughs> and standing with him is uh, his, his buddy Aaron. His friend Aaron, yeah. And then S Kyle Larson <laughs> and Ryan Blaney, <laughs> who are also NASCAR Sprint Cup drivers. Kyle is currently a driver for uh, Chip Ganassi Racing. Right. And Ryan currently drives for the Wood Brothers. That's right. Which is, uh, and he's a Penske development driver. Correct. So uh, I'm like, all right, the, the this is what we're doing. Yeah, so we generally have three headsets ready to go. We started putting out a fourth one just in case somebody comes up and gets involved. And it's it usually like at a bar in case a drunk person shows yeah, up. Like it's never because Kyle Larson's Right, it's never because two other Sprint Cup stars are going to be there. So, uh, you know, Heckman turns the corner and he goes, yep, this is happening. And I look and I'm like, oh, there's Kyle Larson. And then I'm like, oh, it's Blaney, who's a buddy of mine. Right. So I'm like, what are you doing here? And so it just kind of turned into this funny, yeah. weird way of getting three NASCAR stars on at once. We don't like to interview two guests at once unless it's specific to a storyline. Um, so in this case, we obviously took the exception. And, and I think if you listen, you might see why, because sometimes you just start talking to another driver and you're like, oh, right, I should have said who I was asking a question to. And but the, the big technical thing is we were not equipped for effectively five, five headsets right because ryan and i have headsets uh we only had one headset out for ricky yeah and we literally only have one other headset with us which uh which basically blaney and, and larson had to share between each other right so there might be these weird moments where somebody's like talking you know off sound right uh or you don't know who's talking and that's because the headset keeps getting passed between larson and blaney yeah and by the way night like I don't know that Ricky really knew what he was walking into, but Larson and Blaney had zero clue what the hell they were walking into. Well, I think into. when Blaney saw me, because he and I are friends from outside of the podcast, he was like, oh, because I just saw him like two weeks ago in Atlanta, and I said to him, I was like, hey, you should be on our show. And he's like, yeah, totally. And then that's how we get him. 
in a completely random way. So it was just a funny situation, but um, cool to talk to those guys. The, the thing I liked about the whole episode, and I already knew this about Ryan, but seeing it from Kyle and Ricky, is they're just dudes. They were totally just dudes. At no point was there any sort of eagle or ego from them. You know, they were just like happy to have a free lunch, basically, yep. and, and talk racing for a little while. And Ricky did a really nice job of talking about Brian Clawson and his life, which we really appreciated and was the reason we wanted him on in the, in the first place. And they talked about Max Jones, his battle with uh, Scott Speed through the ARCA Championship, as well as like the difference between sports car racing and road racing. And you might not be a NASCAR fan, but this will be an interesting episode just because you get to kind of hear what three basically future stars of the sport are like when they're just hanging out with their buddies. And Kyle Larson goes out of his way to try and get himself fired <laughs> because Max Jones, who we had on a few episodes ago, uh, is his boss, and yet Kyle won't stop calling him an old man. Yeah, he just happily calls him an old man. As, as so, though that's not his boss. Yeah, right. <laughs> and doesn't stop. But we also talk about Kyle racing at the Rolex 24. And which was that, really cool. Which is his background. He thought Jordan Taylor was like 100 years old. So <laughs> the same age. Just things like that that came out of it that were pretty unique. So so without further ado, enjoy originally Ricky Stenhouse, turn Ricky Stenhouse, Kyle Larson, Ryan Blaney, Dinner with Racers, Season 2. Got metal tire! Meow. Meow. All right, we're going to start in 5, 4, 3, 2... So basically, do they know? Does anybody know what the f we're doing? It's fine. You can say. I, I kind of don't know. Do you like it to eat? Not wait in line. I'll do it. Do I have to wait The food is free, at least. All right, so... Uh, Sweet, I haven't been paid for anything this week so far. That's a nice job. <laughs> of course, racers are always super cheap. I was <laughs> going to say, I haven't Trying I haven't to get either. by without paying uh, anything. Yeah, right. <laughs> so when you got roped into this, you know, we figured it would just be you showing up having no damn clue what you were walking into. Oh, yeah. And uh, and then you show up with your posse. <laughs> well, I roped him into it. I told him, I was like, hey, I got to go to this right. interview during lunch. It's at this Italian place. They were like, well, we're hungry, so... Uh, I just roped them into coming. Now you're good, and and so uh, so Kyle, you have no idea what you're doing. I have zero. You have no idea who we are. You don't know what the hell this <laughs> is. No, I, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you wanted Italian food. I love Italian. So All right. Yeah. yeah All right. Work. And we don't have to wait in line. So All right. the line's long. Yeah. The line's super so, long. So these two dudes were standing in front of me when I walked up, and they just started to walk in behind the sign. And I don't know if you met Amanda, like the hostess, like yeah. kind of cute chick. Yeah. She's like behind the sign like started screaming at him and i was oh, like oh wow. shit, i'm not going in yeah so then they get to me and i'm like hey we called about a pocket oh right this way guys yeah we'll help <laughs> you out it's like oh okay cool it's the first time in our lives we've been the cool guys somewhere, <laughs> so. yeah well i can tell you so we were somewhere in that sema show somewhere right <laughs> and i looked down at the time i'm like oh man we got to get we got to get to walk in right. yeah, yeah. that way. Because this is a huge deal. And uh, <laughs> I was podcast, like, can't be late. Yeah, yeah, yeah no. I mean, late, it's, you know? this is, yeah. And, uh, we, we will make or break your career <laughs> being on this podcast. <laughs> this could be it, so, man. This could be this it. Could be I, hope it. <laughs> I, hope you, I hope you get mine going back the right way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyways, we started walking. And uh, I didn't know if we were going to make it on time. But, I mean, we were spot on 12 o'clock outside. Nice. Okay. That was good. All right. No, we like to be on time. We pass the test. I'm and good. Then and we like a free meal. Like uh, I, said, so. I hear you. And then you brought Blaney, who the first thing Thumbed he up. asked is like. <laughs> Kyle like, could not get that headset off quicker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. The first thing We've only of, got four. So the first thing out of his mouth is like, are they serving alcohol yet? Are they serving alcohol yet? <laughs> By the I way, I it's, Vegas. it's Vegas. Yeah. 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 <laughs> forgot where I was. They don't turn it off. Yeah. That's good. It's a good thing. We talked Ryan into coming early. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Well, first off, he. Cause you guys he asked us, hey, are y'all going to see him? And we are like, yeah. We assumed he was coming like yeah. when we were. And right. he's like, well, I'm not coming until Thursday. Yeah. And we're like, well, we're, we're leaving Thursday, so yeah, it, exactly. it may become early. Because so. you guys are going straight to Phoenix from here, right? Texas. Texas. Texas and then Phoenix? Texas, Texas Phoenix, Texas, Homestead, Homestead, three more. Yeah, yeah. Not right. that I'm counting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, yeah. I got to assume so. part of the fun of Vegas for you guys is like, I assume no one really knows who you are out here. Not at the SEMA show. Yeah. Uh, um, <laughs> SEMA. A few people have show. stopped, but sure. not really. Yeah. I was stopped by Joey Logano. It was great. Did he want your autograph? Yeah, out of hundreds <laughs> of thousands of people, Joey Logano stopped me. It Today? Today, yeah, we passed him. You guys kept walking. <laughs> I, yeah. I never saw him. Like chump. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All I heard was young Ryan Blaney, and I turned around. He's the only one who calls me that. So uh, <laughs> I had to stop for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> you guys didn't miss a step. I was like, oh, my guys are leaving. <laughs> my guys are leaving. I got to go. Yeah. I have no idea where I'm at. So Blaney and I were just hanging out in Atlanta like three weeks ago. Yeah, it wasn't too long ago. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, we got to get you on the podcast at some point. This is not how I envisioned it taking place because this is Ricky's episode. Well, there you go. So yeah. you're done. Yeah. I'm, I'm so knocking yours off. Check mark. Check mark. mark. Yeah, good. Yeah, cool. That's perfect. Yeah. Well, you know, I wanted you, my podcast to be cool, so I tried to bring – special guest. You bring your crew. Right, right. No, I understand that. Blaney, so Blaney's got to pay for his own food, though. Yeah. Ooh. Everybody else is okay. After all the stuff I did for you, <laughs> you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> so do you guys have, like, uh, like appearances you had to do while you're here? Like, Kyle's got a I, dinner tonight. Ryan's got stuff tomorrow. I did an appearance uh, yesterday. Okay. Um, but then I brought my buddy out here, Aaron. He's never been to Vegas. That's and, welcome. And, uh, yeah. He likes cars, so I was like, oh, good. let's go. Yes. Yeah, good place to see. Um, so I did some ride alongs yesterday. Kyle gave ride alongs. About yesterday. crashed both of, both of the my ride alongs. out there? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I did the Corvettes, knocked a lot of cones over, and then I went over to uh, one of our uh, head PR guys at our shop. His brother in law uh, is the CMO of Arcticat. So we went over there and they let me ride around in their okay. four by f- or side by sides. and Yeah. Biked it up, got in the wall a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Typical driver shit. Yeah, it was uh, it was fun. Do they give you shit or are they just like, nah, it's okay, it's Kyle Larson, he can do that. Yeah, no, that Robbie Gordon was over there and he was, he was <laughs> yeah, there you go. He was putting <laughs> on, on, on fire. He told yeah. me like, that's the guy, type yeah. of guy you need to give uh, <laughs> demos to or yeah. let them take demo the rides out. That's awesome. You, but, you get to do a lot of stuff. Would you ever go do the Robbie Gordon the truck Super series? Trucks? Yeah. Oh. Would they uh, let you? Would your people let you do that? I don't know. I've never even I've never thought about it oh, or asked. Dude. So yeah, that, that'd be I, I would do it. Yeah. I would do it for yeah. sure. I mean, you guys are all used they to driving fun. like crazy yeah. sprint cars and, and things like that. Like that series yeah. would be they like right home for you. They launch over those jumps. I mean, they seem somewhat safe too. So uh, uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard the yeah. Yeah, this year. There's, yeah, yeah there's really. one guy had his the, jaw ripped off. Yeah, the, the country uh, of Australia might not agree with you. Yeah, Matt Mingay is that his name? Sure. Yeah, I think that's the guy's name. Yeah, basically his entire jaw got ripped off. Yeah. He's doing he better now. Race, he's doing better he's, now. He's good. He's actually like they had a video of him talking. I mean, you can kind of understand what he's saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, they look fun. We're gonna ride. Uh, Vaughn Gittin's gonna, gonna oh. give rides out today, and cool. So nice. Aaron's gonna ride. I think Ryan and I. Kyle might not. A little conflict of interest. Right. Yeah, 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 I get yeah. it. I so get it. I yeah. don't really want to risk getting in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right. So where are you guys staying? Uh, the Encore. Okay. Right on. Ryan's at Venetian. Yeah, you know, uh, I think Kyle's going to pull an all-nighter tonight. Yeah, I got to leave the airport at 6 in the morning, so. Yeah. I, I, I got lots of sleep last night. I got, we went to bed at like 11. I was yeah, we went to bed like early for Vegas so. time last night. Especially. Right. So, uh, <laughs> we knew Ryan was coming, and uh, he likes to, he's the only one here with alcohol. So. Already. We knew, Ricky and I knew we had to get our sleep in last night if we, had, if we wanted to hang with him. Probably throw up all of this table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, kidding, he wants I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, so we're, uh. Going to the PBR tonight. That's, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, right that was kind of a another selling point to coming to SEMA. It's right. PBR starts tonight, so I got some buddies that ride, and so I'd like to go out to that. So. Right. Is that at South Point? No, they do. Uh, I think they do, like, their draws and stuff there, but yeah. um, the, it's at the new arena over here. Okay. Yeah. Uh, right behind the New York, New York. So. yeah. yeah. Uh, that'll be a cool venue. It yeah. used to be like at the Thomas and Mac Arena, like way off the strip. And so it like took forever to get there, whether you car serviced it, drove, taxi. Like it just took – it was a while to get there, and lines were crazy. So now everybody can just walk there. So right. That'll be nice. So is this the crew? I mean, is this is when you guys are Friday night? Dervish. Is this it? <laughs> Dur- Kyle and I spend a lot of time together. Right. You guys race well, on the uh, I would say yeah. Ryan yeah. spends a lot of time with Chase. Chase yeah, Bubba. Bubba. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Kyle and I watch dirt racing every season's Friday and Saturday. Now, so. Yeah, season's over. Not sure what we're gonna do the next. Little Rock's on this week. Yeah. Short track. Well, I won't ask about game because I'm not getting anybody in trouble. But uh, who parties hardest? 
Oh, Aaron, Ryan. Aaron, you're the, you're the objective one here. Who parties the hardest in this group? Oh, Ryan. Yeah. yeah. Ryan. Yeah, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Blaine's all right. We we went out like three weeks ago. We it was like a random Monday night what, too. How, how do you, do you know each other? A random do Monday night. Uh, just through social media. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. All your vines and all your stuff. Like oh, okay. You're pretty creative. Yeah. Now I think that's actually I think how we got kind of going back and forth on Vine one day, like a long time Which, ago. Which, by the way, RIP Vine, right? <laughs> yeah. Somebody yeah. sent me a text the other day, like, oh, man, are you bummed? I'm like, <laughs> I haven't opened that app in a year. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't. Um, but, yeah, but he was in town doing – are you even allowed to talk about that? Is it, like – He's doing a movie thing, but – Yeah, about, you know, he's big time. Yeah, doing a movie. he is. Just a cameo. <laughs> yeah. You delivered a cake? <laughs> I, was, I was there the day before. Yeah, right. Uh, okay. So you guys were all in it? Driver. Oh, no, nice. they didn't ask me. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, so Ricky, one of the reasons we wanted to, to have you on is because last season we had uh, Brian Clausen on. Who yeah, you're, you're very close with him, and Sean and I just kind of coincidentally both were fans of his through different reasons. I always thought it was cool that he and Dario had that like kind of weird team team up yeah. deal at the time when Ganassi wasn't really strong in the Xfinity series, and neither of them really got to show how good they really were. No doubt. And as a road racer, I always was, I, I like, like Andy Lally's one of my best friends, yep. so I like, I like seeing the guys that get to go over and road race, or, or try it, you yep. know, and, and I want to see him succeed on the same time, like when Brendan Gaughan comes and runs in the Rolex, we're like always helping him, you know. Yeah. And, um, it's important to me, like, to see, like, a like a cross between the types of racing because a lot of sports car racing fans are snobs. Like Landon Castle was telling yeah. us the other day, he's like, you sport it car guys, man. It's like, no, 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 no. Yeah, we're, no we're just racers. We're just racers. <laughs> yeah. So when we had uh, when we had Brian on, he, he was awesome, a super humble guy, and, and we just had a great time with him. And when obviously he unfortunately passed, um, a lot of people were reaching out to us like, from the road racing side that were like, hey, thanks to your podcast, we got to know about that oh, guy and everything. Oh, that's cool. That's super so, cool. So we wanted to kind of have – you just, you know, we obviously want to talk about your career as well, but we'd, yeah. we'd love to hear just some Brian Clausen no, stories I, from your, your days no, racing we, with him. We and love stuff. talking about Brian. I mean, he was, like you said, so humble, so yeah. good. Like, but he was so good. Right. Like, right. you know, I think that's the kind of, you know, what everybody liked about Brian is, you know, he just, he would just show up, do his business, and, right. you know, not, not say too much about anything. And, um, you know, I think it's, Brian was always one of those that had a ton of fans. Yeah. Uh, was always really good with the fans. Um, you know, I was super bummed when I – so I moved to North Carolina and uh, moved in with him. And that was during that transition of, you know, Ganassi and, you know, uh, DEI, I think, right. you know, getting Earnhardt Ganassi going. And then him kind of being the odd man out on the Xfinity stuff. Yeah. And uh you know, I didn't think, like you said, he got really the opportunity to show right. how good he really was. I mean, he had some great runs in that car. And I think if, you know, people would have paid attention, it's like, hey, that equipment wasn't the greatest right. then. Right, right. Um, you know, he ran in the top five. He, he, I mean, he had some really good runs. Um, you know, I wish he got to show that more often. Because yeah, uh, yeah. I think what a lot of people forget about Brian is, I mean, he was, like, he's a really good dirt racer. But he won a lot of pavement midget and sprint car races yeah i mean that's that's really kind of where everybody started noticing brian on a bigger stage was the usac uh midget and in sprint car races right. and i think um you know him winning at like salem and you know the midget and sprint car and yeah. you know going to like columbus and, and all those places um that's kind of where he got known so like yeah. everybody thinks of him as just a dirt guy but yeah. he was really good on both sides of it you know his arca career was good and um, you know, we were always super competitive, uh, no matter what we did. So when we lived together, uh, it was every day we would do something that ended up into a competition <laughs> where, you yeah. know, we're, we'll go bowling and, you know, it'd be a super competition bowl and we'd walk out and then, you know, hit the Papa shot on the way out <laughs> just for another co right. different competition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and it's over the last, I was super, uh, you know, glad that this past summer I was able to go race sprint cars with him for a week. Yeah. Uh, we spent my off week um, in June or July, whatever it was, uh, racing sprint cars. Yeah. Uh, we rode up and down the road in the motorhome uh, for a solid week, and um, it was super fun yeah, to just race them. To get, to get back racing yeah, with him, you know, because yeah, yeah. Brian was kind of always a step ahead, I feel like, of, of where my career was. Like, he had got to NASCAR and, you know, 
ARCA and doing all that. And then I transitioned over and was running ARCA while he was in yeah. the Xfinity Series. And uh, then, you know, then I got an opportunity to go to the Xfinity Series. And we were working as hard as we could to get him in our trucks at Roush Fenway. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, and we kind of had him there. Uh, and then one of the guys running the trucks uh, that I think he was going to replace ended up winning a race okay. like the week before the Brian was going to sign. Right. I was like, dang it. So we were trying to get him in the trucks, you know, to to get him into the organization yeah. to, uh, you know, let him, you know, keep doing that. But, uh, you know, he was like, hey, I'm not, not racing this anymore. I'll go back and race sprint cars. Yeah. Uh, you know, didn't skip a beat. And Yeah, he never, when we talked to him, he never had like a sense of, you know, I didn't get my break or like it's not fair. He was like the whole time he's like, yeah, but now I get to do this and I love doing this and oh, I yeah. get to race the Indy 500. And it's like there was no chip on his shoulder whatsoever, which no. is unique that, for a young that man. That bitterness like that. you would have expected. Oh, I, yeah. I tell people all the time, I'm like, if I was in that position, I, I'd be probably kind of pissed off. Like, yeah. yeah, dang it. Like I didn't really no, absolutely. feel like I got a, a fair shake at, at doing it. Right. right. Uh, but for him to go back and set all the records that he set in sprint cars was, yeah. was yeah. really cool. I ordered a couple commemorative shirts for him, and uh, the the receipt still showed Lauren at Brian Clausen is kind of running that whole deal. Is yeah. she still? Oh, she is working her that? butt off. Um, so she's single handedly doing all the. Oh, she single handedly did it uh, to begin with. Right. You know, uh, when they would get shirts, you know, ordered, uh, you know, she would always kind of lay them out throughout her house and, you know, get them right. all packaged up and, and yeah. sent. Right. Well, as soon as everything happened, you know, obviously. A lot of people flooded uh, yeah, exactly. their PayPal account and right. like, yeah. locked it up. And, oh, wow. You know, and so it took forever to, to figure out who ordered what. Like, they had to manually go in and do that. So um, there were some people that weren't patient with her. Right. Uh, there was, uh, but I think a lot of people uh, didn't realize kinda that she was, was yeah. like, kind of trying to do yeah. everything on her own. Right. And right. Uh, it was super neat to see how many people. Right. You know, reached out, yep. ordered, yep. and uh, if you'd have seen some of the boxes, and I know she's posted some of it, but uh, the boxes and T-shirts that were shipping out, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was super neat. And like, you know, now the end of the season, uh, you go to Charlotte last week, and I mean, you see a ton of yeah. Brian shirts, yeah. and I yeah. think that's so cool. Yeah, yeah. That we were seeing him at some of the sports car races the second half of this year. Yeah. I guess one of his IndyCar engineers works on one of the Continental Tire Series teams. Yeah, and so they had BC on the car, like the whole yeah. side of this Mini Cooper was. <laughs> oh, that's which awesome. Is like, it's just like a different world, but it, it you know it still resonated with a lot of people. Like you said, I think that was a cool thing about Brian is he, you know, was friends with everybody and yeah. you know would he would try anything and, and run anything and it. And I think when all of that went down to see the whole racing community. Uh, you know, sports car racers, yeah. Indy car racers, sprint cars, NASCAR. You know, I think everybody kind of coming together and yeah. showing his whole family support and love. Right. It was, it was, um, it was really neat to see. Yeah, right. and helped everybody kind of get get past it and, and get. You yeah, know, it's like the one kinda, shining light out of a yeah. terrible situation. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. you still go to the racetrack. And, right. You know, at Charlotte is, you know, we've kind of accepted the fact that that everything happened, but then all of a sudden, you know, they. They honored him at the Charlotte race at the World Finals, and I, yeah, right. you know, things like that are super cool. Yeah. Right. So, kind of going back to you now. Uh, so, like you said, you were maybe a year or two behind where where Brian was at when you know when you had your success in USAC, and and then sort of the call came to start start doing stock cars for yourself. What did you take away from that? Because the the thing that I remember with Brian was he said his his biggest mistake was he wasn't selfish enough when he went into the Ganassi deal in terms of yeah. how he should have taken care of himself and what he should have demanded. Oh, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. and I think a lot of people, you know, when I first got into uh, running the stock cars, like I ran ARCA and I had like, I got one seat. And I right. should have demanded like, hey, I, I need my seats in every car. Yeah. Yeah. I just took some old seats and put them in cars and kind of made them fit. Right. Well, anytime I ran that car, like I just didn't feel comfortable yeah, enough yeah. i didn't run well enough but you didn't want to come in and say hey can you yeah, change exactly. this right. change I mean, how old are you at right. this point uh i was 19 or 20 yeah you don't want to be the 19 uh, year know, old stomping your foot and, yeah and yeah. so like i was like just kind of made do right and uh you know i think there's times to make do with with what you're doing but 
uh, when you get over to the, especially the Xfinity, the, the cup level, you got to make sure things are right yeah, for right. you. And, um, you know, that was one thing that I learned in my ARCA career pretty early that, you know, I don't want to make do uh, and not feel comfortable in the race car. Right, right. Uh, especially with, you know, I think at that point in time, I, you don't really think about safety. Yeah, you, know, you just want to drive right. something. You just want to drive yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, right. uh, you know, and, and I, you do the same thing as in sprint cars growing up. You know, somebody calls, you know, when I was running for Tony in 2007, USEC stuff, you know, a local guy calls, say, hey, you want to run my car on the weekend? You're not racing a USEC car. And you're like, sure. And you go run it, and you're like, uh, probably What's shouldn't have ran Yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. Uh, like, that wasn't the safest thing to do. Right. Um, well, and the result sheet's not going to show a car that was ill-prepared or didn't <laughs> yeah. have a seat. Yeah, yeah. So after I ran a couple of those, I'm like, okay, I'm just going to run my USAC. Yeah, Unless yeah. you know it's a well-prepared car. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's some of the things that, that I learned fairly early on that um, I think has kind of helped me, especially in the when, back when I was running you know, really well in the Nationwide Series. And, right. um, you know, I think making sure that everything's at, at least the way you think it should be. Right. right. So speaking of ARCA, uh, your ARCA career obviously kind of came to a close with a really oh, bang. interesting <laughs> situation with Scott Speed. Yeah. I don't know that a lot of people outside of stock car racing really knew that story. <laughs> what, what, first off, are you guys cool now? Yeah, no, I, okay. see, I see him and, yeah, and yeah, talk yeah. to him. And, yeah, you know. we, like, watched the YouTube clip earlier. Yeah, I feel, just to like kinda feel get really it. good about where I ended up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and he seems super happy with doing what he's doing. I mean, he's... Which I've never really seen him like super unhappy. <laughs> like sure, even yeah. after that, he's right. like, eh. uh, deal. He's just like, eh, whatever. I don't really care. Whatever. Um, yeah. So no, I saw him out at the uh, go kart track the other, uh, okay, maybe a month ago. Right. Um, and and we were out racing go karts together. So, um, yeah, no, we were we really haven't talked about that <laughs> that right. situation. But to, to give a background for some of our listeners, basically, you guys are fighting for the championship. Yeah, it was ba- basically just up to me and him, really, the whole season. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the field was really stout uh, that we had in ARCA, but it was basically like uh, Ricky or Scott's going to win the championship. Right. And we were at uh, Talladega, and I blew a right rear tire and kind of put us out of that race. Um, I don't know. This was 2008. I can't remember exactly which track was which. But we went to Salem, and uh, we uh, had just come out of the pits. And uh, in the middle of the back straightaway, he just and it was the old school cars, so yeah. the the nose went under the bumpers, right. and you really uh, when you ran up and hit somebody, it really jacked the rear end up. Well, he just crashed me in the middle of the back straightaway at Salem, and uh, I think I was leading. He was running second or something like that, and so I went back to the shop, and Jack was like, "Well, just crash him. <laughs> like, All right, just wreck him." <laughs> yeah, so Jack. Um, you know, that was before his uh, last plane crash, and I think every plane crash he's kind of gotten a little bit calmer, and right. uh, he was still kind of right. wide open then. <laughs> and uh, so he um, he's like, do what you got to do. I was like, okay. <laughs> Thanks, boss. And, uh, you know, coming from sprint cars, you really, I mean, other than like a short slide job, maybe trying to clear somebody, you don't really wreck yeah. anybody yeah. on purpose. Yeah. Well, we were at Toledo, and I knew my only chance to win the championship was – you know, he would have to have a bad run. I felt like we had a car that could win, but I don't, at that point, just winning wasn't going to get it done. And so we were uh, running behind him, and I had passed him right before the caution came out. Kind of roughed him up a couple times, but then I stayed behind him. I passed him when caution came out, and I got behind him. And uh, my spotter's like, hey, you can, you're supposed to be in front of him. And I was like, oh, I'm good right here. <laughs> and uh, so, it, you know, restart later, and, you know, we're running around, and I just kind of carried him all the way down the back straightaway. Right. And into turn three. And um, then I was like, okay, now we'll go win this race. And yeah. <laughs> should be good. And uh, he was, uh, you know, basically like Matt Kenseth did. <laughs> right. Like, oh, no. Right. Uh, just Days of Thunder just. You. Uh, you know, put some tires on it. Let's go. Yeah, he he he, he tried to wreck you so bad he wrecked himself. Oh, just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. as big. Yeah, yeah. it I mean, you destroyed it the- both. I mean, it was <laughs> yeah, it was big. So I, I knew what he was doing, and uh, I was going down the front straightaway, and and I tried to drive it off into turn one as far as I could <laughs> right, to, right. to clear him. Yeah, and maybe he would miss. Yeah, and uh, it didn't work. So 
Uh, that was a pretty tough hit. It, it like, bit my truck arms. It, like, threw the batteries out. I mean, it was big. Yeah. Backed it in the fence. And uh, But, man, we had, like, it was cool because, like, I pull in. Um, they get me, like, into the infield, and every ARCA team out there is working on my car. Yeah. Wow. I look over at his car, and it's just his team. And I was like, this is cool. Like, the, yeah. like the whole ARCA <laughs> right. garage is over here working yeah. on my car, trying to get it back going. Right. Uh, it didn't matter. We both gave it away, and I think Allgaier won a championship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I think, like, his – I think his sponsor gave him like a Dodge Viper for winning the championship. I'm like, wait a minute, <laughs> like that's my went, car, man. Yeah. yeah, like we just gave that to you. You're right, right. So yeah, it was a crazy season. I think there was five of us that literally came into the last race with a chance to win the championship. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't win it. Yeah, if you get a chance and you're listening, it's on YouTube. Just type yeah, in like right. Scott Speed sent house. Yeah. Toledo. Toledo is the first thing. 2008. Yeah. But you were kind of the trailing edge of that that kind of driver development thing where guys were coming out of USAC or open wheels and, and sort of coming in. What was the process to get discovered at the time? Like in sports cars, we, we have amazing tales of guys like putting their names with like the little pull off tags, trying to, trying to get hired. But like, was it, Oh, was in the bathroom. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like where people sell trailers. Yeah. 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 That's our yeah. buddy. Yeah. Andy did that. Yeah. Lally did that. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. I didn't yeah. hear Didn't work. That. Yeah. So he, oh. <laughs> <laughs> he would actually pull a couple off of his own. Oh, to so make it look like, like he's man, like, people, people are, are interested in it. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. I know Carl had, like, um, like business cards. Oh, yeah, we heard a story about which this. Which I have. I had some business cards, too. I, yeah. Yeah. I don't really know if anybody got one that said, hey, I'm going to hire this kid. But um, I did have some. And I still got some left. Uh, I got those at the house. They're pretty solid. But, uh, no, I – so I was running – I ran go-karts from age 6 to 15. And then I started racing sprint Missouri? cars. Uh, Mississippi. Mississippi, excuse me. And uh, so then I started racing sprint cars when I was 15. And uh, I was racing for my dad and uh, another guy, local guy at home that my dad built engines for. He owned the automotive service there. And, um, so I was racing sprint cars, and I was starting to have some success. Went to Ohio and ran and had some good wins and, and some good races. And uh, then in 2007... Uh, I went to uh, Copper on Dirt out in Manzanita, and I was going to run a, a Silver Crown car, which Carl Edwards had his name uh, kind of associated with it. They were a right. Ford team. Uh, they got a Roush Yates engine, mm -hmm. and um, so they ran USEC Silver Crown cars. And, uh, and it was all buddies that grew up racing with my dad. And so, like, I worked at that shop, and in turn, I got to drive the Silver Crown car. Right. So I'd go out there and work every day, and... Um, we were going out to Manzanita. I'm like, hey, do we have any room? I want to throw my dad's sprint car in the hauler. Yeah. And if we have room and I want to run a sprint car, a non-wing sprint car uh, and a silver crown car out at, um, at the USAC Copper on Dirt out in Manzanita. And uh, all of a sudden, they're like, yeah, throw it in. <laughs> I put my car in, put my dad, you know, we had a milk crate full of shocks and uh, threw a couple wheels and tires and, and rolled on. And uh, so then when we got out there, we ended up winning uh, the Silver Crown race and the Sprint Car race in the same night. Uh, we didn't have a midget. Uh, I think Corey Cruzman ended up winning the midget race or something. And uh, Tony Stewart had his non-wing Sprint Cars out there. And so after uh, we had ran, uh, I got Jack Yaley actually – had called and wanted me to run his car in Indiana. And at this time, I had raced for my dad for three years. And my dad told me, uh, hey, we're going to do this like college. You can race for like three and a half years or so. And <laughs> Beat well, it. after yeah, that, yeah. I don't I don't know. Yeah. So it was kind of a cool opportunity. I was, you know, uh, somebody called and wanted me to race their, you know, non-wing car up in Indiana. And so J.J. Ailey's dad called and uh, wanted me to do that. And of course, I agreed. I didn't have anything else to do. I'm like, yeah, we'll go do that. Well, in, like that was in February. Jack Yaley wasn't – he lives out in Arizona. He wasn't going to get to Indiana until the beginning of April. Okay. Uh, Jeff Walker uh, called, who owns really good race cars uh, in Indiana and, and had a lot of success winning you know, non-wing sprint car races around there, called and said, hey, what are you doing in the month of March? I got a car and come up and race. 
And uh, so I called Jack Yaley. It's like, hey, you're not going to be up here till April. Uh, I want to go run for Jeff until you get here. And uh, then, you know, when you get here, we'll go race. Around that same time period, Tracy Hines was driving for Tony. Well, he got hurt. Okay. Jay Drake fr- was managing Tony Stewart's sprint car team, called me and said, hey, um, you know, we got an opportunity. Tracy got hurt. Right. Do you want to come run the full USAC? schedule in the 21 car i'm like god i can't pass this up <laughs> yeah, no i was like jack yaley's gonna be pissed but i just yeah, gotta got, go do it you gotta be right. selfish right? um you know so so we went and um <laughs> i ended up driving for tony um the next week we went like i'd really never ran pavement and the next week we went to the first race i ran for him was iowa in a midget and sprint car had no clue what i was doing it was not a good outing right and then the next week we went to uh, Hobstad, Indiana, and the midget, and we won. I was like, "Oh, perfect! This is good, good way to start yeah, uh, exactly. the dirt side of things." And so we ended up having a good year. But I guess to transition back a little bit, after I ran Copper on Dirt in Carl's car with the Ford and, and things like that, I flew to North Carolina and met with um, Roush Fenway, and, and at the time Max Jones was the competition director. Uh, or the general manager, I met with him and met Jack and was like, basically like, hey, what do I need to do uh, to get over here and get a shot right. at, at running some stock cars? And they were like, ah, just go keep winning. I was like, okay, right. I'll call you later. <laughs> um, so <laughs> then at kid. that time, uh, when Tony and them called, I was like, hey, I called Roush. I was like, I got an opportunity. I know it's with Chevrolet. But it's going to give me some asphalt experience. I've never really ran asphalt. And they were like, okay, well, we'll let Chevrolet, you know, pay for you to go run some <laughs> asphalt, right. you know, with the midgets and sprint car. And then at the end of the year, we'll get you back. Right. So I was like, all right. So I ran literally that whole year. And uh, and then we won, I think, 10 or 11 races. And we ended up signing with Roush Fenway at the end of 2007, tested some ARCA cars. So at the end of 2007, we were at the USAC Banquet. And I told Chevy, I was like, hey, I got this opportunity. Right. I'm going to go, you know, run Roush Fenway, the ARCA car. Uh, I know it's with Ford, but they're like, okay, well, we'll let you go figure out stock cars, and then we'll get you back. So <laughs> it was kind of like a back and forth. It was kind of cool. <laughs> yeah. And, um, you know, so then we've been with Roush Fenway ever since. Yeah. And Jack's been super great. He, you know, ran me an ARCA with really out any sponsorship. We yeah. got some sponsorship towards the end of the year. Uh, and then, like, in my Nationwide Series career, we always had like half sponsorship, but we right. never had full sponsorship. But he was willing to, you know, this was pay Jack out of his pocket invest, and right. said, "Hey, we're gonna, we're gonna go racing." And right. uh, it was super cool. Like looking around, not many other owners right. do that yeah. in our sport. Yeah. It's, yeah. you know, hey, do you have a sponsor to to pay wanna, for you to run? Not you know, they're not gonna it. do a full driver development program. Right, yeah. And uh, so I thought it was neat that Jack always did that. And right. Definitely gave me an opportunity because I had. Uh, no money to bring to the table. Right, right. right. How's your spaghetti? Yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. yeah you. Keep my mic in closer. Yeah. <laughs> so I get spaghetti all over that I'm mic. Murdered my spaghetti over here is really good. Really so good. Kyle loves Italian, and I'm surprised he didn't get a salad. He'll probably well, end on a salad. Well, no, we got like sides, so I didn't want to be the only guy with a <laughs> side salad. I love salad. <laughs> Does the diet change once the season ends? No, Ricky. I mean, I don't know. Ricky might, but. Uh, no, I I'm not I'm not into like healthy stuff, so I just eat whatever I want. <laughs> well, what are you like, 16? <laughs> <laughs> 24. All right, it'll change as you get older. 35 pounds. Getting up there. So now. I don't really need to watch Jeez. my weight. Yeah. So would you would you believe Max Jones did this with us the other day? Did he? Yeah. That's really awesome. Yeah. I like Max. Right. Was I like that yeah, look. Yeah, yeah, your yeah, yeah your boss that guy. Yeah. yeah. He met us at Toast and and yeah. Davidson. Yeah. Oh, okay. And we had breakfast with him, and he literally sat down. The first thing he said, he's like, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. Yeah. <laughs> he's Max like, this is, isn't uh, what I do. It's cool now that Max is, you know, with Colin and then yeah. Ganassi. But, I mean, he was always – I thought he was so cool. And I love I thought Max. he did a great yeah. job at, yeah. at Roush Fenway. And, you know, he took some time off. And right. Uh, I think when he took some time off, I feel like he realized he kind of missed oh, you know, yeah. racing well, and going so to the track. And, right. Um, so it was cool to see him come back. And I think he's done a – obviously – really good job over there with uh turning their program around and yeah. getting faster too so uh yeah i've always liked max for 
for he's a long time. A, he's a super cool guy, and he, he raced a lot of sports car racing stuff before he kind of moved over to mm-hmm. management stuff with Roush. And uh, he, he was one of my favorite dinners we've had because he, res- he respected the fact that we knew – like information on him. He's oh, like, yeah. oh wow. Okay. Yeah. I think he thought yeah. we were going to be like, tell us about Larson. Yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I think when, when a lot of times when people walk in, they expect it's like, it's the mad dog morning show. And it's really, it's just us doing yeah. racing. You know? Right. You know? Yeah. Max. I always give Max crap out because he's so old. <laughs> <laughs> so I always give him crap about, you know, him racing back in the day. You know. All right, Have you seen it. pictures of back when he raced? He had, a, with he had like Roush? a mullet. No, I want to see his hair. Oh, uh, yeah. He had like, like a so mullet so thing for a little I'll while. Have to, really? uh, yeah. I'll have to find the pictures. We got pictures hanging up in uh, the offices at, at Roush. And it's like back in the Trans Am days when I remember this one picture. There's like 10 people on this car. After they had won, because they won everything. Yeah. And uh, and Max was on there. Uh, I'll have to take some pictures. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're cool. But Max, I re- one of the stories I remember about Max is he called me. We were at the Kentucky Arca race. And we could like, I was always so loose qualifying this car. And it was always impound, you know, qualifying. And like, I never qualified very good. So we qualified like 12th or something in the Arca, Arca race. And I was like, man, I know this isn't very good. But Max calls. He's like, what's wrong? I was like, Max, I, I don't know. I was like, we're going to race good. I, I know that. He goes, well, you should be qualified on the pole. I was like, I know. <laughs> and uh, then Sorry. He, so we ended up winning the race, and I was like, oh. Yeah. I told him we, I felt like we could win the race, but, you know, I, I wasn't 100% sure. But, yeah, so him and – I can't remember if it was him or Jack in our competition meeting after one of the races. I, I finally did qualify on the pole. Um in that car, we kind of figured it out, and he said, well, "What do you think?" I was like, "Man, this is fun." He goes, "It's not supposed to be fun." <laughs> I was like, "Okay, <laughs> sorry, right. sir. sorry, yeah. it's not fun, not Max. fun at all." So I ran the Rolex now the last three years, and yeah. <clears throat> every year Max tells the same story. I think maybe you know he's a little senile because he is so old. But <laughs> no, he, did, you yeah. enjoy, did you enjoy your time at Ganassi? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, I love that. <laughs> but uh, he always same same story every year. He'll talk about you know, like you know the headlights because he'd get ready to do his night shift or whatever Mm -hmm. and like you know the lights would start out like shooting on the racetrack and then eventually you know all the bumps he'd like they'd like start like (laughs) going opposite directions like the lights be pointed straight up in the air and one's like straight on the ground he's like we had no lights yeah right well now they're like the whole thing's lit up so it doesn't even matter yeah Yeah. Yeah. I want to go back and say what's old no, Watch just, your mouth, young man. I don't know what it is, Max. He's like, no, like 60. He's listening live. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, I knew it. Max is what, like 62-ish? Three. Uh, oh, My I parents are 60, so he's got to be 60. Yeah, I think he's up there, like 60, Four or five. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah. But so I was Max. Them. Is that the cutoff? And you all might know, d- was Max part of uh, Jack's when they won like 10, 24 hours in a row? Uh, I think for some yeah, of them. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. trans but yeah, yeah, because he basically... Yeah, he definitely was. Yeah, I mean, to listen to, like, yeah. him and Jack, like, talk about that, like, Jack was like, oh, Ford wanted me to go run the, you know, 24 hours, and, like, I told him I needed a year to get prepared. And so, like, he's, like, spent a year getting everything right. prepared to go do it. Yeah. And, like, people's, like, asked Jack, like, hey, would you want to go back and do it? He's like, uh uh-uh. Yeah. He goes, <laughs> I'm, like, I've never lost there. I'm not going back. Yeah, right. Don't ruin <laughs> it. Right. Yeah, yeah. not ruin it. Yeah. So you've done it now a bunch of times. I like telling the story about you getting no, this the is, fast This is Kyle lap. you're pointing at. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. you over this here. To our audio <laughs> audience here. <laughs> Kyle. Kyle Larson. Got it. So uh, you had the fast lap of the race last year, right? Uh, two years two ago. Two years ago, I think ago. we won. And, and the year before that, you I got out of the awful. car and you were, like, you, were, you were like a second off the best guys in the world in those cars. Yeah, and and I, you're like, ugh, I suck. And like there are other guys in the class that are like pro paid <laughs> sports car guys that would like to be a second off a of Pruitt. You know what I mean? Um, I, but I, I like the fact that you were, like, kind of pissed at yourself, like, God, I suck in these things. And yeah, then you I come back a year later, you throw down, like, best lap of the race. And I was like, yeah, that kid's done this, like, twice. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's, like, is that, that's cool. Is that intimidating? I mean, you got, you know, Pruitt's one thing, oh. Dixon. But even, like, Jamie was, like, a world champion go-karter. And Jamie's really, really good. Yeah, yeah that's what no, I'm saying. I, I mean, like, I'm, you're not a road course guy, really. I'm, no, I, I'm definitely fourth string when I'm there, and I, <laughs> and I accept it. Um, but, no, the first year I – I had, you know, zero fun doing it. Um, you know, the off season for me, January is like, it's like I want to go like month. sprint car, midget race. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt like it took a lot of time away from that, you know, because I had to go that first year anyways, I had to go for th- two or three days before Chili Bowl or no, no, 
Something like that. For the roar. No, no, no. But even before the roar, I had to go for like three days. Okay. Then I went and raced something else, and then I came back for like the roar, which is like another three or four days. Yep. And then go to Chili Bowl, and then go back and do the <laughs> Rolex, which is like a full week. <laughs> right. So I felt like I was – and then and then I'm in Daytona, you know, a week later for the NASCAR stuff. So I right. felt like I was in Florida forever. Yeah. And – I was there all that time, and I wasn't very good, so I didn't get to spend a whole lot of time in the car and get better. Um, and then you know, I don't know what changed for the second year, but the second year I was kind of good you know, right off the bat. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, it was it was, it was was awesome to uh, you know, do – I every year I've done it, I do like you – know, I get in the car at like 11 o'clock at night and yeah. go till I don't know, 3 in the morning or so. Um, That's your prime time. Yeah. That's right. I mean, but <laughs> so the track's got a lot of grip then. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I went to, the, went to bed – you know, with the fast lap of the race, and uh, Dixon's getting in the car, me on the car over Dixon, and then, you know, we're running up front, and um, I remember going to bed, I'm like, God, I hope he doesn't beat my lap. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> it's like, I want to... Put it all comes down to that. Yeah, but... Like, uh, the car's good, but, like, don't, yeah. don't beat yeah. my lap. No, I, it was... I was pretty proud of myself from how bad I... F a bad of a job I felt I did the first year, and then, you know, able to, you know, run a quick lap, but yeah. also, you know, be be competitive Smart, and, and no mistakes you know i got to the lead yeah. at one point right um and then we won the race so it was yeah. cool so when you're out there like you, you don't know any of the people you're up I against know, right absolutely yeah <laughs> nobody. it's gotta be so weird like i thought i thought like jordan taylor was old <laughs> <laughs> i thought he i thought like i was racing the old man like but two years yeah, younger than like yeah. yeah exactly i had no idea i was like man who's like, this guy he's good yeah <laughs> who oh, is wow. this old man <laughs> that was super cool when uh speaking of uh, the Taylors when they won and uh, like after Brian had passed, they, like he sent out a picture and said yeah. he parked it. I was like, oh, yeah. that's so cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're great. I, uh, they were I became bigger fans of, yeah. of yeah, them after that good, too. This dudes. year they were and his mullet. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Him, that was Money. solid. <laughs> they Money. were they were watching us practice at Daytona or something. You know, they were standing like where we go through the garage area. So I like waved at them. <laughs> and I checked Twitter later that night. And oh my God, Kyle Larson yeah. just waved. At yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. They're like I didn't even know who he knew. He knew who we were. But <laughs> I thought he was this old man. Yeah, it's fun. This dude's good. Yeah, I don't think yeah. we're doing the, or I don't think I'm doing the Rolex this year because uh, the prototype stuff. Well, let's say I mean they're 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 not running prototypes next yeah. year. It's only the GT program. Which is that? Does that keep you out because it's a Ford? Uh, no, because I ran Ford. Their prototype stuff. Was oh, that's Ford. right. Okay. So it wasn't. Yeah, I was okay to run that. So. But. If a if a four G if a third, I bet that's what they'll do. But say if a third four GT magically appears, I'd love to drive it. That's what. Yeah. It, well, that's what I was gonna say. I was gonna say like, that's you a should Ford. Be in it. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, how do we get you in, Ricky? Let's all, let's 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 get us three to do it. Yeah. No way that car finishes. <laughs> hey, <laughs> us, just three of us for the whole twenty-four. <laughs> that's pretty normal. That'd be kind of tricky just though, because yeah. we're all like night people. You know, we gotta have somebody that. Can Who's gonna do the day? Jamie. We can have Jamie. McMurray Jamie will do the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets up like yeah, super yeah. early old in the man morning. Man, McMurray. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he can do the day shift. Is, is yeah. Jamie old to you? No. Okay. Is that only because I'm in the room? <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's a lot uh, older. Older than he seems. Like he's. <laughs> his, no, no. <laughs> what I'm the saying fuck like. What does that mean? He's in his forties, but like. He doesn't seem like no, it. not at I all. I feel like he's in his thirties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never felt as old as I do right now. No. Run on. Okay. One of the things we like to ask on this on this show, you guys both probably have a similar answer, but who's the best guy out there, maybe in dirt that we've never heard of? Like, and we know like who Rico is. We actually tried to get yeah. him last year. We couldn't get him sorted out. Um, well, now that Chris Bell's a somebody. Yeah, he's yeah. a somebody. Who's the next? Who's the next guy? Like in two years, I'm going to be reading about like getting the red horse ride or something because he's so good. Um, I think Baston. I think Spencer, Spencer Baston. He's got a good family. He's yeah. Tanner's good. running late models and stuff now. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if he. Like I feel like when, <coughs> like Christopher went and ran late models, he like won right off the bat. Yeah. I don't know how Tanner. I really haven't paid attention yeah, to him either. What's Tanner's full name? Thorson. Tanner Thorson. He runs. Tanner Thorson. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He runs Keith Smidget stuff as well. Spencer uh, drove for Brian last year. Okay. Spencer Basin yeah. drove for Brian's Smidget team, uh, and then switched over to to Keith's team this year. Uh, he's pretty aggressive. He's he runs hard and he's a good <laughs> kid. I, I I like him. Ruffles a lot of feathers, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Just pay attention to Keith Coons midgets and you'll you'll figure out 
he's for, gonna make it. Okay, so for me, like for a guy like me, I really want to do a sprint car. And so, a buddy of mine, Chris Dyson, I don't know if that name rings a bell at all. He's a longtime road racer. His family owned a road racing team for ages. He, yeah, Chris Dyson. He's done the Chili Bowl a couple of times, but he's like, I think he's. You may using, have seen him on a Chili Bowl pool. So he's like always telling me I got to go do the Cruiseman School. Corey's is, is that, Corey's is that a, I would say and, Corey's is the most legit yeah, to, to go do. Yeah, that's the thing to go. Yeah, it's Corey's like, awesome. It's not too expensive. Like it's it looks like it's actually a really good deal to do. Yeah. But he's like, you got to go out there and do His that. His cars for like three are nice. Days. Uh, yeah. He runs a good show. Right. And it might still be there. In 2007, we went out there and we were racing like Paris, California. We stopped in to see him and um. It had, like, Corey Cruzman driving school. I put a piece of tape on it, and I put Ricky Sinos Jr. driving school. <laughs> and, like, for the longest time, it was still there. It might still be there. I don't know. Uh, but he's he's awesome. Yeah. I, I would, I'd recommend doing it. Yeah. Yeah, I really want to try that. Yeah. Yeah, because you want to have, like, I think some people, like, give rides and stuff, but the cars aren't, like, real nice. But I feel like he keeps his program up like he's going to yeah. go race it. You right. Know? And so um, – I think he, that would be cool. Yeah. You'd like I, it a yeah. lot. I, I mean, I like. I, I'm pretty actually. Blaney's good in the rain. At least he wasn't go karts that one time we went. I'm, okay. you, you're good in the rain. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Have another drink. Keep, keep drinking. Up. Keep drinking. You're the after show. Brian, did you just get in today? This did you, this morning? I was at oh yeah. I you got to pass on my end. <laughs> he, he said he thought about getting a drink on the plane. On the plane. Yeah. yeah. Naturally. Hey, you got to get going. Hey. Got to warm it up. We got a couple days. <laughs> the hell were we talking about? <laughs> yeah. Oh uh, yeah. So I've so always Ryan enjoyed. I've always enjoyed the rain and like you know sliding cars around and just like that kind of. Shit. And Kenny Wallace drove with us a couple of years ago at Daytona and we were watching in car and he saw me like sliding the car a lot and he's like, oh, you'd love dirt. So he's always like trying to get me to run a dirt late model. Is that what he does or he does like he does yeah. dirt modifieds. Dirt modifieds. That's Kenny, right. Kenny's yeah. like the ultimate advertiser for dirt racing yeah. like never did it growing up and then all of a sudden started running modifieds and loves it yeah like that's all he wants to do yeah um like he was supposed to do an interview with me like in michigan he's like hey i was supposed to do this sit down interview with you do you mind if so and so does it i really got a dirt race i'd like to run <laughs> and like yeah. as long as you know fox yeah. or you know whoever it was is fine with you i'm cool. i'm okay with somebody else doing it he's like Okay, good. Cool, I'm out. And, like, <laughs> like, that's all he wants to do. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Dirt racing's fun. I think, you know, Kyle and I grew up doing it. Right. And uh, that's kind of always been our life. I, I grew up, I went to the dirt track. I was six weeks old the first time my dad raced. Yeah. I grew up cleaning mud off his car, uh, playing in the dirt, right. you know, every week. Ever since I was six weeks old, we went, my mom took me every week. And, um, you know, I so said something that, you know, we've always been accustomed to. So even on the weekends now, uh, we want to watch sprint car racing. Right. And, we, and there's so many out. There's getting to be more and more outlets to be able to watch yeah. it, like live, uh, right, yeah. even if you're not at the track. And I think that's kind of helped grow it as well. Sure. I think the companies that that do that are are starting to do very well and and start showing more and more races on. Uh, it'd be nice to get them on TV all yeah. the time, but uh, being on the computer is probably the next best thing live. I yeah. Mean, Everybody does something on their phone or right. on their computer anyway. Right. So, um, you know, streaming it right off the Internet has been something I think helped grow in dirt racing a lot. And for well, sure. it should it's be an good. easy sport to stream in the sense that, like, a, you know, a one-quarter-mile track is a lot easier to cover than the road course. You need, like, one you know? camera. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Right. So. Like I said, when it first started, it was one camera, but now you're, like, starting to get some different angles. Yeah, they're, starting, they're starting to put it in. Yeah, right? but yeah. I think because they're seeing people from across the country yeah. – uh, across the world tuning in to sprint car racing you know and right. it's it's neat i think sprint cars are i, I just think they're the best thing to race <laughs> do you do you follow anything else f1 or indycar or IMSA no. or anything like that? i mean i watch you it say all. no it's, i watch yeah. it all. Yeah, it's all good. um it's <clears throat> billy johnson helps me yeah, out with good uh, you know some of the the road race stuff yeah, yeah. and uh, we went out to uh, a school and he came up to you guys were out to like Miller right we went out to Miller yeah, and then yeah. he came up to the Watkins Glen test with me right um, and helped me out and actually uh, in practice like when we went back after the test in practice um, I think I was like third fastest a lot of people thought I missed the bus stop but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like Thanks, I guys. came in and like guys are looking at me like 
come on. They, like come people on. next to us in the garage are like, yeah. you missed that bus stop. Come video. on. I was like, no, I promise. <laughs> right, right. And because uh, I like put it like a good lap, lap up, but you know, it was from Billy helping us. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah. back in the day, I, uh, I actually ran in 2006. I did some uh, SCCA stuff okay. uh, for a guy out of Memphis. And uh, I ran a, like a Mazda Miata oh, okay. at like Road America. Yeah. And probably the worst place to go in that car. But, dude, yeah. the straightaways were forever well, long. The whole time. Yeah. <laughs> but I had this little Mini Cooper that was annoying the, it just annoying the piss out of me. Like yeah. I would come off of the last corner, just blow by me. Right. And then like like through some of the corners and stuff, like five, six, seven, eight, you know, the kink and stuff, like I would beat them. And then here comes that Mini Cooper down the front straightaway. It would pass me again. I'm like, I just want to run him off the road because I know, like, if I go one, like, front straightaway without him passing me, That's I could, it. like, That's never it. see yeah, him there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 That's like, how it is with the Rolex, though. Like, with the prototype cars, yeah. they get down the straightaways fast, but then was it the LMP the or cars. LMPC cars. whatever? Yeah. So yeah. They, like, get through the infield really fast. So it's, uh, I'm sure they get annoyed. Yeah, I, dr- I drove one cars. of those last year. In the in the twenty four hour, and yeah. it's surprising that the PC car is actually a little bit better on the brakes because it's lighter and it's got yeah. carbon and everything. And but then to the infield, we're almost the same, and you guys are like massively quicker in a straight yeah. line, like twenty miles an hour or something. <coughs> yeah, it's crazy. I can't imagine like you know I'd be nervous. I'm already always nervous around the prototype car, but if I was to do the GT car, like at least with a prototype car, you're always out the front. Yeah, and you're the fastest yeah, car, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. The, right. Like if you run anything slower, it'd be hard yeah. to. It's a skill get out of the way and you, well get, you get used to it. And the Ford GT is actually an interesting challenge because, like, in the GTLM category, the PC cars actually have less power. Um, and so down a straightaway, it, if you have a slow PC guy, uh, you can't get him down the straight. Or, uh, uh, they may back you up in a corner, and there's really not much you can do about it yeah, because yeah. they've got the straight line speed on you. So then you're really stuck in these weird spots. So. so then uh, you don't know BOP. What does the term driver rankings mean to you guys? Oh, that's that's also <laughs> weird. Like, there's like gold. Yeah. Yep. No, you're yeah. right. You know, silver, you bronze, yeah. like now, platinum. You're also in a single driver category. Right. So it's but, a little bit of a different but thing. But let's just put this name out there. So John West Townley, yeah. his family owns Zaxby's, right? So he's paying to race. So in our series, they would call him a gentleman driver or an amateur. So they would rank him as an amateur so he could drive with a pro. Is, is the idea. They're trying to protect right. guys like that that self-fund their racing. Yeah. Um, but then what they've but done that's is also, Those guys are also how a lot of professional drivers yeah, get to race. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, Ryan but, included for a while. But in your world, you're just a race car driver. Right. You know, like Brendan Gaughan, he's self-sponsored by his yeah, famous casino. Yeah. But he's just a race car driver. Right. You know what I mean? In our world, we felt this need apparently to label people amateur or pro, even though they're very talented. Yeah. So, you know like, I mean? say if so Brendan Gong came back, like, after running NASCAR yeah. and stuff and, you know, doing all that he's done, coming back, if if he was sponsoring the team, he would still be an amateur? Yeah. Yeah, they make, they make him a silver. It's a little more complicated, but, yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah. 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 But, in, uh, but I mean, I, you guys are all, like, paid pros that kind of worked your way in, but, like, there are guys that you race against all the time. Like, you race against Brendan Gong in the Xfinity yeah. Series, and you don't look at him – as anything other than a race car driver, mm-hmm. right? Right. Yeah. yeah. Same thing with, like, uh, if a guy's paying to run his own dirt car, he's just a race car driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you know what I mean? But for some reason in well, sports car age, racing, we've tried there's to – There's so many people that have to. Yeah. I mean, you can't label, so. label people. That's not it, It's just dumb. But I, I love <laughs> – <laughs> I love hearing how it works over there. <laughs> That's just rude. Yeah, right. I, d- I don't know. The sports car stuff confuses me. Oh, uh, trust me. When I go to it, none of us like too. it either. Yeah. No. I only so, deal with it one week a year, though. <laughs> You're right. So, because you guys get to do a couple road course races a year, do you do, like? Would you want to see more road course races for you guys? Because you guys all seem to love it and talk about it. <laughs> no, I hated it. Is it forever. because? <laughs> okay. No, I hated sure. it forever. Yeah. Like we were at Watkins Glen testing, and I was like three seconds off of the best car. Right. And I'm like, guys, there's there's no way I can, like I. I can't drive this thing any faster. And, I, and I'm just assuming that I am terrible. And then, like, we change a setup, and I went a second and three-tenths faster. I'm like, hang on. Just like, that. that. Just one just run that. to the next. Yeah. Like, I'm like, all right, we need to work on this thing. And so we started working. And then we got, we, like, by the time we came back to Watkins Glen, felt like our road course car was a lot better. Right. And then we were more competitive. So I just, 
I think it's more me not knowing what to tell him to do, right. or, you know, because I'm not not super comfortable turning right, you know, and I'm on, like on purpose, on purpose. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I, I can turn right going left <laughs> in a dirt car, but I don't really feel like like a right handed corner feels like super comfortable to right. me. But, um, you know, so I got to where I would say like throughout the Watkins Glen weekend and through that test, I got to where I kind of liked it. Yeah. I'm like, man, I, maybe not as bad as I thought. You know, I just need to make sure that we work on our cars to get them better. So, uh, I would say I'm getting to where I like them. Yeah, that's I cool. love them. I, w- I wish we had more on yeah. the Cup schedule. I uh, to me, it feels more like dirt racing. Like yeah, when we're out Sonoma there, like Sonoma, like, like dirt yeah. racing. <laughs> like on ovals, you know, our ride heights were like glued to the track. Yeah. Like road courses, you can like feel the car like flex around and get right. grip and stuff. And I feel like drivers kind of pay or become more important on road courses yeah. for sure. So yeah. especially when you can see like Mike McDowell who is a road course guy yep. like do really good at yeah, Sonoma yeah. and Watkins Glen in a you know underfunded race team it kind of shows that uh driver talents you know more kind of make a difference there. Prevalent on road courses yeah. and ovals. Yeah. yeah. That's cool. All right, too much racing. Uh dick so we're, jokes, we're here back to dick jokes. So we're here at <laughs> SEMA. Um you guys are all here for different sponsor commitments, right? Like who are you here for, Ricky? I'll let you finish. <laughs> we'll, yeah. we'll edit the pause. <laughs> Timing. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take over. I'll, <laughs> I'll let Ricky eat. So, Kyle, who are you here <laughs> for at SEMA? Uh, yesterday, I, just, I had to do a, a Chevy thing. And, uh, and then tonight, I have a Enios motor oil yeah. dinner. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. So, it's two things. So, there's a, there's a specific reason I'm asking, which is, you know, we see this a lot in sports car. On the marketing side, we see it in IndyCar, too. But on your end, I'm sure it's a thousand times worse. Tell me about the biggest scam you got taken for in the sense of like... Or attempted. Yeah, like attempted scam in the sense of like, was there a guy who kept calling you to dinner on some deal you got and, you know, you got three dinners in and realized the whole thing was nonsense? Like, what are the, what are the big red flags for you? I've heard of some stories like that. Yeah. Um, one of those happened to uh, Trevor Bain not like not long ago. Oh, really? Oh, was that yeah. the Lally Farms guy? Yeah, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Right yeah. On. Have you not heard of this? No. Oh, wow. Do you know the story? <laughs> I, I don't know the full story, but I mean, like, I heard bits and pieces. Like, this guy was going to sponsor Trevor at, like, maybe Bristol or something. Yeah. To, like, Bristol. Trevor went to dinner with this guy. Yeah. And, well, like, it goes full circle. So, this guy has the last name Lally. of Lally. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. And unrelated to him and run unrelated to our Andy Lally, yeah. there is a Lally Farms, which apparently is a profitable okay. venture of some sort. Sure. So, this guy calls Trevor Bain says he knows Andy because they're related somehow <laughs> and that they're all connected to this Lally Farms money. And, of course, Trevor figuring, well, okay, Andy's yeah, a NASCAR sure. guy. I'm sure we're all in the same family, so why not? And they go through the whole dinner process. And this guy has apparently used Lally's name multiple times really? on different deals. Wow. Yeah, to the point that uh, like he was like scalping uh, Atlanta Braves tickets I or something. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, that's the only, like, crazy thing that I've really ever so heard like that. Like, nothing's really... Well, but you guys actually have real managers, I was going to say, you're probably so pretty yeah, protected. No, you have, have a little protection. Like, when I was first starting, I have done some, you know, oh, this interviewer wanted to do a radio show. I swear this dude was doing it, like, in his mom's basement. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, we've had those. Yeah. 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 That's us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do it. I mean, I came all the way out, came out, to came all the way out here to SEMA to do this podcast. Hey, we got Max Jones, man. We're getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. We're getting yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah, we hear a lot of those kind of stories in sports cars yeah. a lot because generally someone's paying for – like, we don't have the corporate oh, sponsorship. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's so a lot of private funding and a lot of it. So, so you got explosives. And we don't really have – I mean, I guess that's kind of my job, but sports car guys don't really have the filter of a – like, you've got Joey, correct, or, or guys yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Guys who can take the phone yeah. call and kind of say, yeah. like, oh, no, you're full of Mm-hmm. Right. Kind of, yeah. You know, I mean, we're a little busy to do that. I mean, we're golfing. Sure. Well, actually, that's, that's <laughs> funny. <It's, laughs> yeah, dirt racing. Yeah. Well, but that's interesting. We actually we, we tried to hook up with you in Charlotte when we were there, was that last week? Yeah. And, um, and Joey said you were on like a fishing trip or a golfing trip or something. Probably like, was golfing. It, was it a sponsor thing? Yeah, we were down in Charleston. Right, uh, that's cool. Denny, had, Denny uh, Hamlin had his charity event. Okay. Um, so we went down there to, to do that. And... Uh, that's a, a fun. What? We yeah, got we, we, got we got it. We got it. We Jesus. Got it. We're good. Look, we're just trying not to spend any money. <laughs> yeah. Race car drivers try to spend like, no money. How quickly can we get out of here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, Larson's trying to go double his money at the blackjack table. Um, oh, how much are you up so far? Oh, I haven't gambled. We, I we're up. We haven't gambled last okay. night. Right. And we haven't spent anything, so right. we're up. <laughs> Give it uh, up. I haven't done good gambling. Like, lately, so. There's free food? Yeah, we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Um, Is that a eat goal? Anyway. Is the goal to see if you can spend nothing outside of on the tables? That wasn't really a Sweet. goal, but that's kind of always a goal. Okay. I'm like, we, I didn't, we didn't set that for the week. But right. Fair enough. Luckily, we're Have rich. you ever, do you guys ever, well, you come out here for the NASCAR race. When you guys come out here, you stay in, in this part of the town, right? You uh, stay sometimes. Like, yeah. Um, last couple of times I've stayed out at the track. Yeah, but yeah. Ever since the, ever since NASCAR changed the schedule where we kind of hit all the West Coast races. Yeah. yeah. Three weeks in a row, I think we've all kind of started bringing our motor homes yeah. out here. Right. Yeah. Where before I would It was stay bad like when you had to go to Phoenix to, or Texas to Phoenix to Martinsville to I think oh. Daytona, Vegas, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Daytona, Phoenix, Vegas. Yeah, and then back, back, and then back to Fontana. Yeah, it was, but three races in a row. It's so much helped. better. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. The cool thing about coming to SEMA with the with the racing thing is like, as you guys probably know, so are you actually doing anything here? Yeah, Ryan Blaney. Ryan yeah. Blaney. Yeah. Are you talking to me? Yeah. Okay, great. Watch the sauce. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get the sauce are you, on Are the you wire. here just to hang out and then go down, or are you here for an appearance? Uh, today I have off. Which okay. is nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, like they said before, they convinced me to come out early. And tomorrow I got a couple for Ford, a right. discount tire. So who paid for your flight to get here? The team. Okay, cool. Great. So, yeah. Yeah. so that's the best part about getting to come here like this. Like it's I said, like I've spent, it doesn't cost you anything. I've like, spent no money either yeah, yet, which exactly, is great. Exactly, exactly. Uh, I did spend a little bit on Uber today, but that's all. Yeah, that's a write-off. You yeah, know, a, yeah. yeah, you're going to have that. Well, they said send me your receipt. I'm like, all right, cool. Perfect. <laughs> so I can send that receipt for $13. $6, yeah, yeah. for Uber. Are yeah. you going to actually do it? That's what I need to know. No. Okay. <laughs> no. He's like, only because I'll forget. How cheap is this kid? Because I right. don't want to put the effort in to. Yeah, yeah. It's not worth the $13 seat. of effort. I got yeah. you. Yeah. It's not worth so. my time. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, okay. Discount Tire actually has a really big um, showing out in SEMA. Okay. It's been a lot of fun to, to hang with that. That company is really good. Right. And we do a lot of stuff out at the Speedway. We'll do tomorrow, and they have a lot of employees out. Yeah. yeah. Much oh, so y'all don't do that here? No. Or it's, like it's out at the racetrack. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, that's what we do. Uh, everything with with all their people. Yeah. So. So let's get into some like you know really hard hitting uh, drama. Who do you hate in NASCAR? Who do I hate in NASCAR? <laughs> I'm kidding. We we ask people in sports car racing because we don't have any like sponsorship. Yeah, we don't have to. Care. You know, no oh, one's yeah. no one's gonna get fired. They'll just be like, oh, he said he doesn't like that guy. Yeah. But one of the questions we asked last year to a lot of road racers is like, if you could punch someone in the face and get away with it, who would it be? Does that exist for you? Or um, what's that? Uh, Townsend, Townsend Bell? Townsend Bell, almost universally. Really? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, a guy named Gustavo Yakuman, who you probably have never heard of. but Sounds like If, if you watched a Rolex series race in like 2013 or 14 and there was you'd a crash, yeah. he was in the middle of it. If you just yeah. saw a picture yeah. of him, you'd already be pissed <laughs> off. <laughs> so I think for our sport. No, he was in a prototype. He's a prototype guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, have yeah, you seen yeah. that video Townsend. of the guy in the green Ferrari? Uh, no, at Monza. That? Right? Yeah. yeah. That's Seafried's like, teammate. Oh, that's Marco's that's guy? Marco's guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Or like five times in like two laps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's just like some that's wealthy dude that's like got a, got a license and he's out there just like wrecking yeah. over so and over and like over again. That, but if you're going to be a sports car driver, that's the life of a pro driver is to have that guy as yeah, your teammate. Yeah, you're like going to get paid up with that His sometimes. pro co-driver is a really good friend of mine. And like, yeah, that's the job. You show up and just wait for this guy to crash. And then you go out <laughs> and you do three laps in a wrecked car. And then you've done your job. Yeah. You so get in wow. the wheels like this. You're like, oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Wow. I think a NASCAR changes like. Seems like you'll go like a month of like running with the same person and you just get irritated. But yeah, then yeah. a month later, it could be somebody else. Right. Because like, I feel like our our cars change so much. You like sure. run with a group of cars, it seems like. Okay. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, you kind of get your car better, and then you're running with a different group of people. Right. right. <clears throat> Do you hold grudges? No, nah, I think we forget about them pretty quick. Well, you guys are running so much. That yeah. it's probably just gets lost yeah, in the wash we don't after race. a while. How many times do, does sports car racing series are generally like ten races a year? Oh, yeah. I could, that's not near enough. I raced in two this year, uh, two series, know, Continental Tire, and then yep. the World Challenge Series, and I probably was like twenty-two races or something like that. And I like there's only two or three guys doing that, and, and I wow. like it. It's fun, but like a normal schedule is like ten to twelve races. Wow. Yeah. It's also Man. a little different budget. It's actually not that different. Like, what's the season of Xfinity cost right now? I don't know. Uh, six? Yeah, $6 really? million dollars for oh, 30, 30 for 30 races. 30 plus races. Yeah. 
in a high profile series? Uh, yes, yeah, like six to eight, I think. Six to oh, eight. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, that's way six, cheaper than I thought. Six to eight for 30 something races, whereas in if you're really high profile the, events. The GT class of IMSA is like $3 million for 10 races that no one watches. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So I you think do if, the you numbers, do a, actually, if you do a 200 a race, yeah. it's 6.6. Got the old yeah. calculator out over there. And that's, yeah. and that's like. Just so you know. <laughs> that's a team that's going to win. <laughs> Decent, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, you can get more or less. What's a truck season? Ooh, that's a lot cheaper than. Maybe right. three. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah three, for, three's for 20, on the high 20 end. 20-something races yeah. or whatever. That's for like a top. Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. Your truck. Yeah. 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 And again, yeah. people watch that. Well, and that's why your boy Justin Marks, that's why he went over to, to, yeah. to short tracks. Yeah, we had dinner with Justin the other day in Burkdale. Talked to them for a little while. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, we Justin's were, cool. Yeah, great guy. Yeah, we were uh, we were with uh, Landon Castle a couple of days ago, and he's he's not a believer in the post race techs after after an incident. Like he just, he feels like it's completely unnecessary. What's it going to yeah. really solve? Where do you stand on that? Yeah, I think we all probably feel the same way. It's our cars like we try to move things on purpose. Yeah, yeah. And people crash their cars on purpose. Yeah. Uh, so. If everybody's doing their job, then you're not really going to have anything to tech because you're getting your stuff moved back. You're hitting the fences on, you know. Right. On purpose. And everybody's yeah. doing it. It's not right. like. The post race like text. 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 Oh, text. Okay. I thought you were talking about text. Like apology. Oh. Yeah, like, yeah, I was like, where's this going? Yeah, <laughs> I thought you were talking about text. text. I was like. No, no, Landon's text. like, after the race, I'm not texting He's you not to texting say, somebody to say, okay, okay, sorry, I hit sorry. You. He's like, yeah. yeah, whatever, I'll see you down the road. Well, he might get punched in the face. There you go. There you go. He does text our group text. We got a huge group text with everybody, and he is on it all the time. I can see that. I can see that. Yeah, yeah, not yeah, really right. apologizing or doing anything, but just like <laughs> he's like, I'm gonna do. Talk. I'm gonna do that again next week. Um, I generally call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm the same way. Uh, I, I like or to play I'll see him at the race. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. I crashed Paul Menard at Richmond. Like I said, you start running with these guys. Like I yeah. crashed Paul Menard at Richmond on accident. Drove it in. Got loose. Hit him. And uh, I was like, oh, he's going to be super fast. <laughs> so, like, I went to Chicago the next week, walked into his garage. I was like, hey, guys, yeah. right. you know, y'all had a rough year. Right. I ruined your day the other day. Talked to his guys. Yeah. Talked to him, you know. But then over the next month, we were all, like, next few races, we were always around each yeah, other. Yeah, you're like, right. ah, I can't hit this That's guy. the thing. is like, like sports car races, you'll have three, four weeks, a month in between yeah. races and things can fester, but you guys, you'll see each other in four days. So yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's post-race text. 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 <laughs> I thought not it was too text. Worried about, not too worried about tech. 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 I was like, well, oh, sorry, good. NASCAR. So, uh, we heard everything you were saying. <laughs> we actually could hear you. We could we hear could you. Hear. Yeah. Uh, I can. I I'm, can. Not, I'm not sure exactly what you said. <laughs> we can. Yeah. It's not, it's not. He flipped you off this week? Oh, yeah, because you moved Wait, him who was this? Who? Landon. Uh, I'll send post-race texts sometimes. Like, miss you. Like, if I can't, like, <laughs> if I don't see the person, like, uh, right after the race. I did. I was like, dude, sorry. I. This is Ryan. Well, I think, this, like. This is Ryan Blaney talking, by the way. <laughs> He's a sweetheart. What? He's a sweetheart. He's a sweetheart. He's gonna. He's gonna we clear kinda, the air. Yeah. yeah. And I, I waved you by. I, I was like, all right, you're gonna pass me away. Just come on. <laughs> yeah. It was. Uh, you know what was awesome about Martinsville? Well, there wasn't much awesome about Martinsville for me. I crashed early, so I was watching the race, and I'm like, oh man, Kyle's gonna win this thing. Like he looks fast. Had a restart, and he just drove right up to the lead. <laughs> Did you see that? I, I, yeah, Larson. Yep. No, I was you know I was back in, in 20th. I couldn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, well, I, better than me. I was watching on TV. Right. Um, but Kyle drove right up to the lead. I'm like, dude, he looks good. Like 20 laps later, <laughs> whoa. I'm like, whoa, what happened? Um, yeah, so it, it seemed like there was a lot of people at Martins what kind of – McMurray had a good either going good, good or go, like going. like it just I don't know where he ended cycled up cycled a lot. We were listening on the car because we were like driving through the desert. Yeah, it, he was like P four or something for for a little while. Yeah, he so that whole caution debacle thing. Like he was behind me. Yeah, I mean I was. By the 11th? way, what, what happened there? Like uh, what, nobody knows. Ooh. Like how hard is it to? I'm just gonna. I'm a. Yeah, he, the, he lucked out and got the fifth on that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, right on. I mean, so I was watching. I, I know pretty good what happened. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we do a pass-along question on the show. 
This morning we uh, we had breakfast with my boss, who is like a seven-time road racing champion, Peter Cunningham, and uh, runs an Acura team and everything. And so his question was, uh, what era would you have rather commenced your career in instead of now? Uh, probably the 80s. Yeah. Stock car racing in the 80s was, I think, super cool. Right. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, even looking back at sprint car racing in, like, the 80s, those guys were – those guys were ballsy, yeah, man. you know, and, and, you know, like looking at pictures of like my dad racing with like no headrest, no, like, like, I mean, those guys were crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, What's a you know, back race? when like Ryan's dad was racing sprint cars, right. you know, they were getting speed out of them, but it, you know, the safety equipment wasn't keeping Terrifying. up. Yeah. And so I think it's, you know, I think, you know, you don't really talk about it, but I think some of the reasons why we like racing is, you know, there is a risk, and it's Dangerous. it's yeah. kind of fun. So it makes it exciting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I tell like a lot of people, with like, I like golf, but that's, like, the only thing that I like that, you know, you don't really have a chance of getting hurt unless right. somebody hits you with a golf ball. But Fireworks uh, sales are always good. Right. And they're always hurting people. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally selling I mean, explosions. Logano and they're a fun group to play of with. us had a great Roman candle war one right, time. Right, right. Knowing that you could – Lose an eyeball. Well, we had helmets on, and I smoked <laughs> him in the shield. So, right, body Safety limbs first. were going to be. But, right, right, right. Um, yeah, I think the '80s would be super cool to be racing in stock cars, sprint cars. It just seemed like that whole era was pretty cool. I wish I'd have got to run like early 2000s of like USAC was tough. Yeah, Outlaws were tough. NASCAR That's true. was really, really popular at the time. So I'd, I'd pick that. Yeah. I don't know yeah. about here. So we have a – oh, yeah. Let's see what this kid wants. Ryan Blaney. Blaney, would have, <laughs> Blaney just wished he had grown up racing dirt. I do, I do, man. I really do. Uh, <laughs> how are you – like, how did that not happen? <laughs> <laughs> he wanted to be a moon chatter. <laughs> That's right. Uh, <laughs> how did dirt not happen? Yeah. Like, your uncle uh, is, like, Mr. Uh, – Yeah, his dad. Like, yeah, dad, right, right, The right. whole thing. Yeah. Like, my but dad like you, and his brother are big dirt racers. Yeah. That's what they grew up doing. My grandfather started it. He started in the, you know, the 60s and – you know, that era was crazy, yeah. talking about eras of racing, because, yeah. you know, they didn't have any seat belts or roll cages back then when they started racing dirt. And when they implemented the seat belt, I remember being told a story about this. When they implemented the seat belt, you'd get laughed at, because they <laughs> right. thought it was better to be thrown out of the car than, oh, than get be wrapped strapped up in, in and, yeah, and roll yeah, and have yeah. it land on you. Yeah. Uh, and then they implemented the little halo bar right, right yeah. behind you, and then that was, like, the best thing ever, and then they got <laughs> smart and actually had roll cages. <laughs> um <laughs> But That's just, so awesome. I did not. Yeah, it's crazy. They'd rather be thrown out of this race car if it flipped than, than stay in it. But uh, just really growing up, location growing up. I grew up in North Carolina. I was born in Ohio, but my dad got a chance to race NASCAR in the late 90s, early 2000s. And uh, we moved to High Point, North Carolina, and there's no dirt stuff in that area. Um, so I just did, like, the asphalt, late model stuff. I mean, it worked out. Yeah, no, you're out, do, you're okay. I mean, it worked out. It's I mean, going to get like, good for you eventually. Yeah, I, think. Yeah, I, mean, well, I, hope, I hope I can run that dirt stuff a little bit more. I used to test my dad's cars. My yeah. dad's sprint cars used to build them. And, uh, but then I got the axe uh, like four years ago to not even test them anymore. So, Dang. I haven't been in a dirt car since. I have to talk to Roger, make sure, let him get you to run like Chili Bowl and yeah, yeah. Like, get your feet wet. Let, <laughs> let's. I think Chili Bowl is the last thing I should do. I think that's the worst one I could go no. to. No. So Keselowski got to test an Indy car. He did. Are you? Do you have any interest in doing anything like that? Like yeah. trying to get a swap? Swaps? I do. I would love to do any type of racing except for MotoGP. <laughs> Why? Because those guys are nuts, man. I would agree. But would you ride the bike just to go do a lap? Oh, I do. I, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, I would ride. I would That's ride. Yeah, I'd, go, I'd do. I mean, as far as you know, putting the handlebar uh, on the ground. Nah, nah, nah. dude. Yeah, yeah. I don't okay. want. I've yeah. seen the Those death. Guys are I've seen the death wobble and the yeah. chunk of the rider. I don't know if I want yeah. to do yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The no Isla way. Man videos oh, ruined me. Dude. Yeah, on heroes. That deal. Heroes. All right. So tonight we're going to be having dinner with Brendan Gone. Oh. So any question you could think to ask Brendan Gone. Um, doesn't have gone. to doesn't have to be racing related. Yeah, to anything you want. Ask him. I kind of want to know, like, so he wears his Georgetown mm -hmm. jersey or something under his race suit every race. 
Has he ever changed it? Like, <laughs> has it been the same jersey? It couldn't have been the same jersey forever. <laughs> I guess he's a little bigger a little now, bit. right? Uh, but all, I wonder, like, does he wash it? Does right. he like? Because if it's what's, like a lucky thing, what's like the yeah, ritual. Yeah, yeah. What's the ritual in that? Yeah. I mean, Allen Iverson did call him out in his Hall of Fame speech. Right. That was pretty cool. Yeah, that was. Cool. Yeah. That was crazy. Kyle. Oh, do I have a question for him? Yeah. And how much do the slot machines really make him? Yeah, well, that's, that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean they rig, they rig. Uh, the slot maybe machines. ask him if he wants huh? to sponsor a sprint car team. There you go. Because I've got, yeah. 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 we've totally both, loaded, yeah, yeah. totally loaded I mean, questions. South Point yeah. Casino <laughs> on some <laughs> World of Outlaws sprint cars yeah, I mean, would be awesome. Outlaw team, get they that run question Vegas. to me as quick as you can. Yeah, I'm gonna need That'd a written. I'm gonna need a signed contract. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have a proposal? I can just take it. Over there with I mean, the Outlaws, they do have a long West Coast swing. They do. <laughs> we run Vegas. Yeah. Run Vegas early in the Vegas, season. You guys Paris. know you can just talk to them when you see them. Like I know, but tomorrow. maybe if, like, we you talk to them and then we talk to them. Sure. Spark it. It'll like, spark he'll, he'll hear it, like, a f- few times. And he's like, man, this must be pretty important. Yeah, these guys are really onto something. Yeah. yeah. In the words of Kenny Powers. Lube Lube in the deals. deals. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having us. You don't – no, we sign off. You don't sign off. Hey, <laughs> my, my sign off, I'll just take it off and leave. <laughs> like, I'm out of here. <laughs> All right, Brendan gone question, go. Uh, Ryan Blaney. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Something about the casinos, how much do you make a day? <laughs> we, did you hear what they just said? <laughs> what? On his phone. How, how drunk are you right now? Out. How drunk are you? I've only had seven of these. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they said how much do the slot machines make a day? Yeah, because he, he, his, his thing is the slot machines in the airport. In the airport. Yeah. He oh. gets them. That's his, those that's are his. like his, like, oh, here you go, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. yeah. Huh? He never went in the airport. Never went in the airport. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't know what my question is, man. I don't know. I that's don't have a right. question. I think they covered it all. I okay. think we got it. All right. I think they covered everything. And Ryan's question was casino stuff. Casino so. stuff? I casino don't know. <laughs> stuff. Just put that <laughs> in. Just yeah. vaguely look Actually, away. you should ask Ryan's – Ryan's question is going to be, has he ever been, like, in a back room when they've caught people cheating? That would oh, be super wow. sure. Yeah. 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 cards and stuff. I was just going to ask <laughs> Stenhouse, who do you All have right. questions for? Yeah. <laughs> I mean yeah. – Yeah. That'd ever, be awesome. You ever witnessed, like, anyone counting cards and getting their hands broke? Sure, yeah. Head and advice. Oh, yeah. that'd be awesome. Yeah. Oh, back in the day, like, he, yeah, they've been I'm here like forever. Michael like, Flores, yeah, we're, yeah. we're having dinner at Michael's. Oh, yeah. You know, which I'm like, yeah. no, 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 no. Like, <laughs> this is not – he's like, that's ah, fine. All right. Yeah. All right, fair enough. <laughs> that's cool. Cool. Well, you guys probably got to get going. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you know who that is? Do you have any clue? Okay, that is Bill Riley. The car you drove at oh, Daytona is a Riley, yeah, Riley Daytona yeah. prototype. Yeah, so we're yeah. doing. So y'all just carry him around. Yeah, or? so yeah. this is Flat Bill. He was on our podcast last year. He's like the coolest guy. He lives near you guys in Mooresville. He's the coolest guy. So he was like, "I want to go on the road with you guys," and we're like, "Done." <laughs> so, so he didn't know what this was going on. So what we're doing is we're doing a Bill Riley rap video to launch season two, <laughs> and everybody's in it saying Bill Riley, and we're gonna kind of weave yeah. that into the music. He has no idea about any of that. <laughs> so like, we have Max Jones dancing on the sidewalk in front of Toast. He was no dancing. Yeah, yeah, we made it happen. Immediately, he's like, "I can't believe I just did that." Uh, yeah, yeah like, I, I, I'm definitely out on that. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah. But I don't dance. Yeah. Ryan's you? had enough that he might dance. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, I already am. <laughs> um, but what, if, if you guys don't care, what we'd like you to do is just on video say uh, Bill, Bill Riley. Riley. Bill Riley. And that's, then that'll go oh, on Literally, that's it. So with that, Bill, I would say Bill, 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 <laughs> Bill, Bill Riley. <laughs> Continental's got the check. Meow. Wow, that was such a great episode. That guest really knew how to tell a story. I agree, Ryan, who's clearly sitting here right next to me. That Ricky Stanhouse is something else. And Kyle Larson and Ryan Blaney. You're welcome, Sean. I'm right here. All right. Thank you to uh, Ricky for for coming out and joining us. A big shout out to uh, Kyle and and Ryan for having zero clue what they were walking into and just kind of going with it. uh, It's always cool when you see guys being willing to do that. Also, uh, shout out to uh, Joey Denowitz for for helping us put that together. And uh, that's pretty much all we got. We're going to go back to uh, a guy we've played a few times this season named Jared Gorbel. Uh, He's available on iTunes. Uh, You can spell it J-A-R-R-O-D. 
G-O-R-B-E-L. I'm a big fan of his. Uh, he's got a great song called I'll Do Better. Enjoy. came to pick you up The color of my eyes blazed Telling of the mistakes Once again I made You knew instantly So disappointed Fell without warning Taking me forever to accept this weakness that I've been defeated I need help I need yours Well I have lost control And I can't be trusted If I won't stop for you I won't stop for myself Give you all my love But it's not enough I'll do better I'll do better, I swear I'll do better Give you all my love But it's not enough I'll do better, I'll do better Cause you, you're losing faith in me It's frightening to think that the Conscience that I have Somehow slipped away I couldn't feel a thing the Devil's made a new friend We get closer every day Taking me forever to accept this weakness That I've been defeated I need help, I need yours Well I've lost control and I can't be trusted if I won't stop for you, I won't stop for myself. Give you all my love, but it's not enough. I'll do better, I'll do better, I swear I'll do better. Give you all my love, but it's not enough. I'll do better, I'll do better Cause I want more than anything to prove That I am the one, the one for you Well I want more than anything to prove That I am the one, the one for you I'll do better, I swear I'll do better Give you all my love But it's not enough I'll do better, I'll do better Taking me forever to accept this weakness That I've been defeated I need help, I need yours Well I have lost control Trusted if I won't stop for you, won't stop for myself. Yeah. Give you all my love, but it's not enough. I'll do better, I'll do better. I'll do better. I swear I will. I'll do better. 